Hi guys, Amanda Brooks uh, coming to you from Bangor, Maine. I am a practicing physician assistant. I've been practicing emergency medicine for 19 years. And I also have a Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition, which is why I wanted to talk to you today about a very important vitamin, vitamin C. Okay, so back in school when we were learning uh, about vitamin deficiencies, we linked vitamin C deficiency with scurvy. Guys, most of you don't even know what that is. And we don't, while we don't have to worry so much about that today, um, vitamin D deficiency can be seen amongst all of us. Uh, have you guys ever had like that, those little bumps on the back of your arms? Um, we call that uh, keratosis polaris. Uh, do your gums bleed? Um, do you bruise easily? Anyway, these are some signs associated with lower vitamin C levels. Um, but why I'm doing this video is um, vitamin C and making sure that you are consuming and supplementing with such um, is extremely helpful. And I don't think that many of us know the benefits of vitamin C. So this is what this video is about today. It's all about how important vitamin C is. Um, firstly, uh, I'm a huge advocate for uh, antioxidants. Vitamin C is a potent antioxidant, which means that it helps to decrease inflammation. We know that inflammation is linked to all disease. So getting enough vitamin C is going to enhance that effect. Um, there was a study looking specifically at blood pressure. Um, and the study showed that it helped to decrease systolic blood pressure, which is the top number, by almost four points, uh, and the diastolic, the bottom number, by a point and a half to two points, which could result in you uh, taking or not taking an antihypertensive medication. Number three, um, linked to decreased coronary artery disease. So they actually looked at a study of 300,000 individuals and those that were taking 700 milligrams or more of vitamin C daily for over 10 years had a 25% reduction in the development of coronary artery disease. So this is still our number one killer, so this is huge. How about you, those of you who are suffering from gout, that big red swollen joint typically plaguing the great toe, um, it's an accumulation, an overabundance of uric acid. Uh, and proper vitamin C intake can help decrease uric acid production, thereby decreasing gout flares and gout altogether. There was a study looking specifically at 46,000 men, and those that were properly supplementing with vitamin C had 46% less gout attacks. Now I know, I see so many of you in the emergency department with gout at your wit's end. So try supplementing with vitamin C. Supports brain health. Um, it supports the immune system. This is how most of us know about vitamin C, right? Like when you get a cold, um, people are hyper supplementing with vitamin C. The long-term studies showing if this is effective, uh, they're a little shaky at best. But what this does do, it enhances your immune response. So it increases production of white blood cells, which are what go to attack an infection when it's invading. It helps to improve the integrity of your skin. So our skin, guys, it's the outermost barrier to invaders. So this is important. It also helps to promote wound healing. So those of us that uh, might have a wound, diabetics, uh, uh, I think of um, predominantly. Where do we get this? So I would much rather uh, get the majority of vitamin C from food sources. Um, and I'm pretty sure if I took a poll and asked which food sources were high in vitamin C, pretty much everyone would say that they drank orange juice, which I do not promote just because mostly it's very high in sugar. And actually oranges, although they do contain vitamin C, they aren't the highest containing fruit source of vitamin C. I think of things like cantaloupe, strawberries, um, peppers. I eat a lot of red and yellow peppers. Um, kale, parsley, um, Brussels sprouts. Um, so getting as much tomatoes, 
Um, getting as much vitamin C from our food sources, that's what we want to promote. Um, if we're going to supplement, which I do suggest, um, supplementation um, is best done on an empty stomach because the um, vitamin C is absorbed in our small intestines, so we don't want it competing um, with anything. Um, the other thing that I think of is if we're going to supplement with vitamin C, uh, we want to enhance uh, absorption by um, using a bioflavonoid. Um, one that I think of most readily is quercetin. So quercetin's in our food sources as well, um, but uh, this is a potent antioxidant. When I'm supplementing, I'm actually using something called uh, Super C. Um, it's put out the, by the Berry Good Elixir Company. I'll link this uh, product uh, in the description of this video above and below. Um, but why I love this um, is because it contains something called amla. Uh, I used to use this. This is like an, uh, an Indian gooseberry, super bitter in flavor. I used to use the powder. I used to put it into smoothies, but I could kind of still taste it. Um, this uh, is a uh, is very, very high in vitamin C, but also contains a large amount of quercetin, which we just talked about to enhance absorption. Um, this also contains kamu kamu. Uh, kamu kamu is, um, it looks like a cherry. It's harvested off a bush from the Amazon rainforest, and it is the highest food um, in vitamin C on the planet. Um, this also contains sumac, uh, which sumac and kamu kamu also were high in quercetin and um, pine bark as well. So this is my kind of go-to. Uh, I know what's in it. Um, Charity Berry, the master herbalist, uh, who uh, is, um, is an amazing woman, does her research, uses organic um, quality products. Um, again, so although we are not deficient because we're not walking around with scurvy, um, we might uh, benefit um, tremendously by um, supplementing uh, and making sure that we're eating enough food sources of vitamin C. So if you guys have found this helpful, like it, share it. Oh, and if you haven't checked out my new website, yourwellnessally.com, please do so. Um, thanks so much. Be well. Bye.